Hi, Lauren Lewis here, and in this video, we'll show you how we made this composting toilet. Make sure to stick around to the end to hear our pros and cons after using it on the road. Before we started building the actual toilet, and even before we put up the walls of the interior of the van, we knew we'd need a vent hole around our toilet box area. We only vaguely knew that we wanted the compost toilet behind the driver's seat area, so we picked a random spot and kind of went for it. Using a two inch metal hole saw, and we started by cutting from the inside of the van, then we finished off by cutting the hole from the outside, because we thought it might help with keeping the burrs from getting out of control. Next, we grabbed a two inch soffit vent with a pooled drain hose to use as the venting channel. We applied an adhesive sealant on the soffit vent flange to adhere it onto the van and used duct tape to connect the hose to the vent. We left the length of the hose long so we could cut it to size once the walls were up and we put the toilet in place. Now that that's done, onto the toilet build. We used pre-finished three quarter inch plywood and started by making a basic box, attaching three walls and the bottom floor with one and a quarter inch screws using simple butt joints. We made sure to pre-drill to prevent splits and used a square along the way to keep things nice and toasty at 90 degrees. You'll also see that we cut a hole in the back panel in the area where we installed the soffit vent on the van. So we'll be able to slip that through. Next, we added a divider panel that'll separate the business area and the storage area, where we'll keep the toilet paper and the cleaner. Then we drilled some pocket holes on the walls so we could attach the front panel. We had an old computer fan laying around, so we mounted it on a scrap piece of half inch plywood with the hole cut out in the middle to allow for airflow. We attach it to the back panel over the hole we cut out for the vent. We also wanted the business area of the toilet to be sealed off from the rest of the structure, so we can try to contain the smell. We attached a three inch wide strut along the back that'll be used to anchor the toilet seat lid. After measuring the height of the lid in the closed position, we added a small piece onto the front panel to act as a positive stop. We used Starbond CA glue and activator to hold it up while we secured it with one and a quarter inch screws. Then we added the toilet seat lid. We attached it with a couple piano hinges so it could lift up and we could access the area underneath. We placed the toilet seat on top and traced the mounting point as well as the seat opening. We drilled out the mounting holes first, making sure to vacuum up afterwards. Then we used a jigsaw to cut out the opening. We had to trim a few times to get the size just right. The toilet seat installs with the provided hardware, so once it was on, we placed the urine diverter about halfway through the opening, attaching it with screws. With the diverter in place, we can now mark the position of the spout on the liquid container. Using a two inch hole saw, we cut out the hole and used this PVC drain pipe fitting and glued it into place. You see us using a sealant, but we found out that it doesn't work very well with the plastic. So we ended up using five minute epoxy instead. And while the epoxy dried, we sealed all the corners with silicone. This will help contain any odors and any leaks, should there be any. 
Then we secured some scrap pieces down with brat nails to help keep the urine container from sliding around when we're driving. We did the same thing for the number two bucket by using some scrap pieces and screwing them down with pocket holes. And once we put the containers in place, we found a critical error. As you can see, there are gaps between the round number two bucket and the urine container, which can cause a huge mess if we're not careful. So we ditched the round bucket and found a rectangular one that fits the space much better. Now we can catch all the poops. After we got the bucket situation figured out, we attached a two inch wide strip along the back portion of the box. Before putting the top lid on, we drilled a hole for the rocker switch that'll turn the exhaust fan on and off. We plugged the connections in and fished the remaining wire through. Ideally, we'll clean up the wiring and make it neat, but realistically, this is how it's gonna be forever. So with the wiring complete, we added a strip to keep the number two bucket from shifting around while driving. We drilled a three quarter inch hole with a Forstner bit about halfway through the wall so we could use this three quarter inch dowel as a stopper to hold the lid up when we needed it. We also added a simple leather strap to help pull the lid up. Finally, we put on the top lid and secured it with piano hinges, adding a lip to the front edge. Then we brought the toilet into the van and slid it into place, making sure to line up the exhaust hose we attached earlier to the hole we drilled on the back of the box. We secured it with two inch long screws along the back of the wall and the floor. With the toilet secured in the van, we used cereal containers to hold the peat moss for composting and a bottle of vinegar and water solution to use as disinfectant. They fit neatly into the side compartment with some toilet paper. Before using the toilet, we lined the number two bucket with a biodegradable trash bag and prep it with a sprinkle of peat moss. After a few weeks on the road, we love our composting toilet and the added comfort having it inside the van. It saved us a handful of times when there were no public restrooms available. The computer fan came in clutch to reduce odors while we were using it, and we found that it's crucial to completely cover your number twos with peat moss to minimize the odors. And with the box closed, the van was virtually stink free. We found that a few things could be improved. We built the toilet to accommodate my height at five feet. So the liquid container that we chose was wide and short to fit the available space. But we found that it's not conducive to bumpy roads when it's more than half full as it splashes around. We see why other builds use taller jugs to avoid this from happening. Also, in order to lift the liquid container out of its spot, we wrapped a strap around it to use as a handle but it's not the cleanest solution, so we're still brainstorming a better fix. Last but not least, we added a gas strut to keep the top lid open because it had a tendency to fall when the van was not level. We imagine that we'll continue to iterate on the design as we use it. If you stuck around this long, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more van build videos. Thanks for watching.